Yo, how's it going? I just wanted to do a video basically recapping on the month of January. 30 days, no excuses. I wanted to do something new uh, in the new year. I wanted to really push myself to grow and just get rid of some bad habits and develop some new ones. And it was really, really, really worth the effort. So in January, I every day for 30 days meditated, uh, read and journaled. And yeah, really, really worth it. Not easy some days, um, feeling like I really didn't want to do it. Some days I left it to the very end um, to get it sorted out. Um, sometimes it was right before bed. But as time went on, generally the pattern was I got it done first thing in the morning so I would then have a better day. Uh, it's, it just had a positive domino effect, really. Uh, so I just want to talk about those things briefly. Um, really my intention with this kind of video is to encourage others to try new things and to believe that you can develop and grow and do things you haven't done before and learn to do them well. Uh, there's an awesome motivational speaker and author and many other things, uh, Les Brown, and he pretty much has this idea that we should try, we should learn to do things, we should do things bad until we learn how to be able to do them good because you can't start off really well, you know, generally. Anyway, so meditation was the thing I did first. Um, I thought that if I get my mind right first, um, then the journaling will flow easier and the reading will be more of a pleasure and I'll be more present. So um, I've had an on-off relationship with meditation for years. Um, I came across meditation through a book called The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle. Many people will be familiar with that book and that book is based on um, a lot of spiritual literature um, that came some hundreds, thousands of years even um, before before that book um, and has influenced many authors and um, yeah, great book. Anyway, um, something I want to do more in 2020 is not go off on a tangent. So the meditation, uh, yeah, 10 minutes. I even started off at five minutes a day, five minutes a day, sitting still with my eyes closed uh, in silence and just allowing thoughts to come, allowing thoughts to go, learning to disidentify with them um, as as in like they were my identity, like I was having those thoughts. I, I'm at a point now where I don't personally identify, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm conscious and when I'm good mentally, I don't personally identify with the contents of my thoughts uh, and my feelings and everything. I see them as a, a separate, separate things that are just a, an internal process. And I really think that this is so good for mental well-being and mental health because so often um, we say things like, you know, I'm sad or I'm anxious or I am lonely. And the, the language is a big thing. You know, language can intensify the reality of something or, or, or weaken it. So, you know, mindfulness and meditation, it taught me to sort of, instead of saying like, I am, I am sad, I developed awareness to the point where I would then say, I am aware that I am experiencing the feeling of sadness. And that just puts so much more distance in between me and that, that experience because that's all it is. It's a fleeting experience and it's passing and I will be there when it goes. It came, it was present and then it went. And I was not it when it tempor temporarily um, was present to experience. It was just a thing in and of itself. Um, yeah, meditation is just great for so many things. It helps you sleep. It helps you focus. It helps you be more present in your own life. It helps you be a better listener. Helps you eat more consciously. Um, just benefits on benefits on benefits. Really, it's so good. I'd strongly recommend everyone watching to think about it. Um, I plan on doing more meditation-based content in the future because I'm so passionate about well-being and I really think that there is a type of meditation for everyone out there. Uh, I think a lot of people just think, oh, that's not for me. I'm not spiritual. I never see myself like sitting in silence and everything. But we, we must, um, I believe, change our perceptions if we are to change 
um, ourselves and our, our ways and our habits and everything. So never give up on yourself. Anyway, <clears throat> so after meditation, I would then journal because I thought that my mind is, is primed. Um, I've instilled some peace and some presence in my day and now I'm going to journal um, and the thing I used for journaling was a great resource called Future Self Journal, Future Self Journaling um, and it's it's this little document, 10 prompts, uh, it's by a great woman, Dr. Nicole Lapira, I believe her name is and she is on all social media outlets um, as the holistic psychologist, her content has really given me some in insight in my own life it's really powerful stuff um and yeah she's just a healer and she just wants to help the world and i don't even know her but i have so much love for her and so i sign you sign up to her newsletter and you get the future self journal pdf delivered in your inbox and i was just using that um and before before january came like i was trying to do the future self journal thing i was trying to do it consistently every day and I only lasted six days and it wasn't even six consecutive days. I did it like two days in a row. Then there was like a day off. I missed that. I was like, ah, oh, I'll still call the fourth day, day three, because technically it's still three days in a row. But, you know, trial and error and through your mistakes and feelings, that kind of that kind of builds momentum in you to endeavor to do better next time. So that it's all good. Any amount of progress that you make in a positive direction. So don't be too hard on yourself, really. Self-compassion is so under just it's not even acknowledged and therefore it's so underappreciated but there's me going off in a tangent again anyway so yeah journal in 10 prompts and it's it's just really about putting yourself in a state of clarity and awareness and you know meditation journaling reading all these things are really so at some point in your in your life in the future you're going to be an improved version of yourself so it's not so much that it's trying to take you out of the present moment and where your life really is it's about realizing that we are always moving forward and if we put the work in now um we will be better one day and yeah it's it's really the the work is the is the distance in between where we are now and where we would like to be so um i don't really want to say too much on that um because it, I, I i didn't make that content and um yeah, it's free and the the newsletter is definitely worth subscribing to. Um, but the the future self journaling is a really great tool to just penetrate um, through the, the haze and get clarity on your life, where you are and where you would like to be. So strongly recommend that. Um, I was doing it for 30 days, let me see. Um, you know, I, I think there's a natural... Uh, peak and trough to everything um the start you're excited um yeah i'm journaling this is uh this is what i want to be this is what i want to do and then after a while it gets like a little bit repetitive you start to feel like you know it oh i know this so well now because i've been doing it for like 15 days whatever um but you just got to be aware then that that's that's the mind trying to hijack you and and um sabotage the operation really but uh yeah it's just doing it to, and when you start to actually sense that it feels like it's more of an autopilot thing than a conscious thing that's good because that means it's starting to be implanted in your subconscious when you're waking up and you feel like that's just something that you go to you go to the notepad to begin your journaling um that's that's like a sign that the habit is transferred from your con conscious to your subconscious and it's it's a part of your behavioral pattern um but yeah, the, I mean, there's research done that takes like 22 to 30 days um, on forming habits. So the reason that I wanted to do that for a whole month, and I'm still doing it now, um, but I wanted to experiment with it. I was to see um, how it would go because I've always been someone who has never seen myself as a, a consistent person when it comes to um, trying new positive habits I'm always like stopping at like day two or getting distracted or whatever so it was I, I just think a part of me had had enough of the failed attempts and it was time for me to like really really just commit to it because I thought that I'm just at a point now where I believe in my own self-worth and I feel like I'm, I'm really worth the effort so um, I really hope 
you feel the same and if you don't feel the same that you learn to feel the same and you will if you stick at it and the other habit that I was doing daily was reading um, I really enjoy reading um, and I think it's really important that we always carry on our education there's so many books out there about absolutely everything there's experts in every field that you can think of you can always pick up a book and learn something that you didn't know anything about written by someone who is a professional in the field and it can just it, it, you know it can really help help you out in your life if it's a topic that you are wanting to grow like in, in a career in that direction or whatever or if it's just out of pure curious fascination um yeah books are just awesome uh so i mean this is sort of like lesser relevant but the books i i started off reading one book and then i thought i'd spice it up like the next tomorrow when I read, I'm going to read a little bit of a different book and, and so on. So um, the book that I started off with was The Wise Heart by uh, a guy called Jack Cornfield. And man, that is such a great book. It's, um, I don't really know what genre it falls into. Like typically you'd probably put it into self-help and psychology, spirituality. Uh, but I feel like labels sometimes can really put people off. Um and just narrow something down, which is quite expansive in, in, in the literature itself to this thing that's just like one word concept or a phrase concept and it just takes away from how, how great the book is. Um, man, there's so much wisdom in this book and there's so much information and in terms of like how to practice your own tra transformation and how to, how to change and to improve. Um, it really taught me a lot about self compassion, and taught it helped me deepen like my meditation practice. And it's just full of stories about people who have all ranges of problems and issues, and through just conscious practice of um, awareness and delving deep in into themselves and their feelings and you know everything. It's it's just a beautiful book of the human psyche and the human condition and pain and suffering and transforming that into enlightenment and inner peace so really really great book um after a while i started reading a little bit of another book um i forget the lady's name i'm not sure uh haven't been reading that one too long but it's called running on empty um and it's a really really good book it is about it's the subtitle is like running on empty it's like dealing with uh, childhood emotional neglect or whatever. Um, and stuff like that fascinates me. It just resonates with me. Uh, and basically in that, in that book, it's like we all have a certain degree of childhood emotional neglect. But something that blew me away um, personally was the, the reality that w with childhood emotional neglect, it's not something that you can look back in your life and you can see. Um, you know, often we grow up as adults and we feel like confused about where we are in our lives or um, we just don't know why we are the way we are and the reasons for our dysfunctional behavior. Um, and it's just one of those, it's just one of those boulders that we carry and it's sometimes quite heavy on our minds and everything. And, you know, it comes up in your head from time to time. What, what's, why am, you know, I don't know about you, but that, that was me anyway. Why am I this way, etc. Um and you look back and you you think about like, I'm a big believer personally of that we get all our dysfunctional behaviors and wounds from our childhood. Um, obviously at other stages and other times things can happen to shape your personality and your your behavior and your outlook on life and everything. But the roots at the deepest at the deepest level, it's it's when you're a child. Um, there's this thing called the absorbent mind, and it's basically. Um, from birth to six years of age children are in their most sponge-like state and that's when they learn and, and they take in the most but anyway um yeah it, it basically makes the point that you you can't ever really spot emotional neglect in your life because you're looking for what happened but emotional neglect is actually about what didn't happen for you um and that's why you can never really uncover it because you're looking for something but the actual thing is that it's invisible. You know, you can't see emotional childhood emotional neglect because it's not what happened so much. It's what didn't happen. Um, and that really, like, made me 
it was like a moment for me where I was like, wow, that makes that just makes so much sense for me personally. Um, it just gave me a, a sense of understanding. Um, I guess, I guess I just want to say a little bit more on. So I've talked about those three things. I just want to say a little bit more on, like, as the days went on, you know. Um, some days with meditation, um, you would feel resistance. Some days with reading, some days with journaling, of all these things, you would feel resistance. You'd be like, oh, I don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it today. Like, I've been doing it every day. Um, but that is your brain just struggling in unknown territory uh, because it's uncomfortable your brain doesn't like um, to do things it hasn't done before and it tries to protect you uh, and and presents resistance and yeah combined with the reality that everything in the modern world is just vying for your attention and trying to distract you from yourself really um, it can be quite hard sometimes we can pick up a phone and just escape in a thousand and one different ways and subjects um, but the hard the pushing through the resistance and there's there's uh, notes at the start of the future self journal and that's basically one of the points you know um, showing up for yourself and pushing through the resistance is worth it um, and ultimately like there is not many better feelings than, um, you know, self-discipline um, and saying, you know what, that was hard, but I did it and I feel so good about myself because I did it um, and I did it by myself and yeah, so there's just so much like personal takeaway and like a sense of triumph with that. So, um, you know, if you're watching this and you're going to do some new things or make some changes, just keep that close in mind. Like, the hard work is worth it. I, I know that's maybe a bit of a cliche, but it, it's true. Um, I think often we get caught up in the hard work um, and the the uncomfortable feelings that we forget how close we are to the sweetness of victory and, and success. So meditation can be hard sometimes because your mind is really loud, it's really busy, and there just seems like there's no escape and you're like, whoa, I didn't realize there was all this noise inside here. This is hectic. I can't meditate, I can't do this, this is not for me. I completely understand that, but again, it's just it's just one of those things that you have to push through the resistance and just um, approach it with like a, a lightness and, a, and an acceptance of, it's not always gonna be like this, but show up for it, just be with it, and um, eventually it will quieten down. Um, and, and you'll see that beyond the mental activity, there is um, there is like a place of peace and presence that, that was always there, but we just didn't realize it because we've never taken the time to look inwardly at length. Um, and it's a beautiful feeling and it's a beautiful experience when you get there. So meditation is really, really powerful. It's really worth um, going through the inner battle uh, strong couldn't recommend it anymore um, and yeah it's the same with the journaling um, there's just days when you just don't want to you're thinking you know this is the thing with behavior change you have to be aware that there is this inner narrative going on it's it's more like a dialogue um, and it's your autopilot that's like I don't want to do this, this isn't me, I don't normally do this, this is uncomfortable, thinking about all the negatives, thinking about how it's more of a problem, it's more of a bother, and then there is the higher self, the future self, who you are more at heart, like truly aligned with, um, and that's the one that you have to consciously cultivate, um, and you have to, when, when that autopilot mind comes in, you have to say, look, this is worth it. I am worth the effort. Um, hard work pays off. The reward will be sweet. I will be better because of this. You have to learn to motivate yourself and find your reasons, your why for wanting to do this, and that will keep you strong. Um, but yeah, the journaling is great, man. It's, you know, you think like, how, how much do we really know ourselves? You know, it's easy to say, oh, I know myself very well. Like, 
okay, but how much have we actually looked in and observed and seen and just witness what's going on in, in there? Um, that, that's a whole different ball game really. So um, I think I think we should spend some time facing ourselves and, and, and observing and learning because I, I feel like that's where honestly, um, it's like one of the biggest sources of learning that we, we can um, gather in our, in our own selves. We're, we're literally just a vessel of the history of our whole being. And there's just so much wisdom and, and teaching within that. So um, reading is just one of those things I'm passionate about, I guess, because there wasn't a whole lot that appealed to me in school. They never, never offered um, subjects or books on things that I actually realized I was really interested in. So I read now about things that I think is important and that is valuable and that is really fascinating to me human behavior for one and spirituality and ethics and things like that you know um and then other subjects to a lesser degree but um you know there's a good saying and it's like there's no real difference between a person who can't read and a person who doesn't read um and i think that meaning there is obvious but we should always we should always try to learn more and expand our understanding and our knowledge um yeah i think it can make you it can enable you to have more interesting conversations with people um i quite like meeting people talking to people and talking about like the books that i'm reading at the minute um you know generally if there's if there's not much like else going on in that conversation you know because by default um you just fall into talking about things that you always talk about and yeah it's just adding a little variety and spice uh, into the conversation um, people are usually in, somewhat interested to hear like about something that they maybe don't know about so that works for me but reading is just something um, yeah I mean our brains our brains like are always able to learn so we should just utilize that um, it makes for a break from watching tv or being on your phone or whatever man but um yeah that's it this video has probably been a lot longer than i intended it to be and much respect if you made it this far i hope it's been worthy of your time and i hope you're doing good we're into february now and this month um i'm focusing on exercise and fitness uh it's something i've never really been big into but um yeah it's just a new challenge for me i'm still going to be doing the journaling and the meditating daily because i feel like they're really cemented now um and yeah but you are awesome you are beautiful you're loved you're appreciated and you're powerful beyond any awareness that you have about yourself and if you don't believe in you i believe in you and you've got this so uh that's it for me until next time but thanks for listening and yeah peace out see you